You're about to find out what progress is being made on the return to cruising out of the United States, the UK, Europe, Australia and New Zealand. I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my Tips for Travellers cruise updates where I unpick the biggest breaking cruising news and discuss what it means for all of us as cruisers. The focus in this episode is on where we are on the resumption of cruising in the main cruising regions right around the world. I want to start by exploring the progress the lines are or aren't making on the US CDC's framework for conditional sailing. This lays out the path to the resumption of cruising out of the United States. The CDC process was announced way back in October 2020 with a series of steps that the lines have to go through before they can start sailing again. The first stage to remind you is about simply returning ships to the US waters and implementing very specific CDC rules and tracking around the crew on board procedures and safety while also in parallel building passenger and crew testing capability. The second stage being running test cruises. This was with volunteers and it's to try out and confirm all the new protocols. The third step is applying for a license to sail with paying guests based on those test cruises and then the fourth actually sailing under a whole set of new CDC rules and tracking. Many many cruisers expected those test cruises to be up and running before the end of 2020 or at worst in January 2021 with full cruises starting up in March. So how are things progressing. First off, we are able to check on how many ships have returned to US waters and how well they're doing in meeting those CDC requirements for crew in that very first stage because these are updated and published every single week. Now there are some really big things that I've taken from analyzing and looking at the weekly reports and I also think they clearly indicate which lines and ships are further along the CDC process. Firstly, the number of ships that have returned or are on their way back to the US waters to fully start engaging with the CDC on that return to service has significantly increased during the last four weeks. There are now around 67 ships listed in that CDC program and there were only around 20 when the framework to conditional sailing was announced way back in October. Secondly, half of the ships returning to US waters are from two cruise lines. Carnival Cruise Line which now has 16 ships listed and the Royal Caribbean Line which has 17 ships in the program. Thirdly, Norwegian Cruise Line surprisingly only has three ships, Norwegian Gem, Norwegian Jewel and Pride of America currently listed as being in the program. Now this may be indicative of their plans versus those other two major lines. The Norwegian CEO Frank Del Rio last month was reportedly saying that they have more faith in being able to return to sailing in Europe before the United States. There was also a letter that I covered in a previous update which was sent to Norwegian Cruise Line senior officers. It was leaked to the Cruise Center website just after their cancellations to March and the line said they, and I'm going to quote here, could possibly launch ships in Europe before sailing again in the US. So I'll keep a really really close eye over the coming weeks if there is a ramp up of Norwegian cruise line ships joining the CDC program. That's important because lines have to give 28 days notice before bringing ships back into the US and once they do they usually I've realized appear on that list that comes out every week pretty much immediately. So based on this it could suggest Norwegian will not have any more ships in the US during January at least but we will watch that list. Fourthly, the thing I've noticed is there are three other lines with significant numbers of ships included in the first stage of the program already. So these are Celebrity Cruises, they have nine ships, Princess Cruises which has seven ships and Holland America which already has six ships listed. Now Holland America and Princess have not been using Miami and Port Canaveral as much as other lines but they've actually been using both San Diego Port and a little bit of Los Angeles as well. So ships like Koningsdam, Westerdam and Emerald Princess have already called uh, in San Diego in December. As I mentioned a couple of others are scheduled to go into Los Angeles. The ships they then moor out to sea as they work through all the various preparations and trainings but they are 
at that part of the US. The fifth thing I notice is that lines with much fewer ships in the Stage 1 program include MSC Cruises. They've got uh, three ships which are close to Miami, MSC Meraviglia, MSC Seaside and MSC Armonia. Disney have three, Disney Wonder, Disney Dream, Disney Fantasy. And then there is Oceania Regatta and Seabourn Odyssey also showing up on the reporting. Virgin Scarlet Lady, by the way, it's not returned to the US from Europe and there's nothing on the reporting yet. Finally, in looking at all those lists and probably as significant as to how many ships are back or on their way back to the US, it's important to note that not all have passed stage one yet. At the time of recording, less than half of the ships in the program have been given a full green rating, which means they've met all of the CDC requirements for crew. So there's clearly still a lot of work to be done to get through stage one before many of those ships and lines are gonna be able to apply to move to the test cruise stage. Now, if you want to keep track of the ships entering US waters and so really starting down that first stage of the CDC program to return to sail, the link is in the notes of this episode. You can check it, it's updated every single week. And also I'd recommend if you're booked on any cruises out of the US in 2021, it's probably worth looking to see if your ship has joined the process yet. So taking all of that into account, where are we on those test cruises? The lines themselves are staying very quiet on this. No cruise line has announced any dates or even plans for the required test cruises. Now they've been asked many, many times uh, by loads of media outlets to give more information. And the most that the CEOs have offered up is that it is really taking quite a lot of time to work through all of the CDC requirements, which are in fact pretty complex. So for example, in addition to the changes they have to make on board to enable physical distancing and tracking, they have to put in place revamped and expanded medical centers. They also have to do things like they have to build a whole testing capabilities, both on and off the ship. They have to develop arrangements with land-based medical facilities to deal with any outbreaks. They have to recruit the ships, they have to train them, and so on. So there's a lot of things to be done. Royal Caribbean has been the only line so far to set up a register for people to indicate interest in volunteering for those test cruises. They've also set up a Facebook group and links again are in the notes of this episode. However, even they have given no update on timing or plans for the test cruises yet. So signs for early dates in 2021 for test cruises so far is not encouraging but we all wait with interest. And of course, as news comes, I will update you on that whole area. By the way, you can also keep up to date on the very latest dates. Cruise lines do hope to start selling right around the world on an update page on my site, tipsfortravelers.com. It's constantly updated with any cancellations or resumptions. Uh, there's a link in this episode or simply go to tipsfortravelers.com and the listing always appears at the very top of the site. The timing for cruising resumption in the UK also remains uncertain, although the government has actually agreed the proposed protocols for when cruising returns, they are not prepared to agree a timeline at this stage and have no signs of shifting on that. The cruise industry themselves, they say they are hopeful that they will be allowed to run their test cruises around the UK with UK only guests in March with a scaled return calling on ports in Europe, of course, if there are travel corridors agreed between April and June. Now the Carnival UK chairman, David Dingle, he recently told UK Travel Weekly magazine, for example, and I'm gonna quote what he actually said here. If we can get the travel advisory changed, we may be able to do the UK waters phase in a test period sometime in March, but we have to be realistic. We'll be looking at sometime between April and June on average. He points out that it takes up to 12 weeks from the government in the UK lifting the no sale advice to those lines being able to set sail. At the time of recording, most UK based lines, including Pino Cruises, Fred Olsen and Saga, they've canceled all the way through to April, while Cunard have canceled through to May. In Europe, the Italian Costa and MSC Cruises and the German Main Schiff, Aida and Hapag Lloyd lines, they're still operating a few limited cruises, which are currently very much focused on the Canary Islands. And that's due to the increased lockdowns and limits on cross-border travel in Europe, uh, the mainland Europe itself. Hutu Gruten is also operating a limited Norwegian port only service, which is actually also due to increase in number of ships during January. 
Costa Cruises is still hoping to resume their Italian-only port cruises in January for Italian travelers. Uh, meanwhile, MSC Grandiosa, that's also due to resume their Italian-only port cruises also in January, but they have already pushed MSC Magnifica back to February due to increasing uncertainty about when Greek ports will be open again. So there is really no major news on when more broader cross-country cruising in Europe are open, particularly Spain is very important because that is one of the most important embarkation countries in Europe. Of course, the Australian government has a ban on cruise ships entering Australia until March at this time. So again, there's no new news and everyone's waiting to see if they're going to extend that or let it lift. So it's probably going to be quite a few months before we know that. Meanwhile, though, in positive news, Ponant have announced that they have received conditional approval for one of its ships to sail in New Zealand waters for New Zealanders from February. That's following months of discussions with New Zealand's Ministry of Health. So some good news there for Kiwis. Of course, Ponant is quite an expensive way to cruise. The small ship Australian Coral Expedition ships, Coral Discoverer and Coral Adventurer, are also sailing Australian itineraries for Australian cruisers from January. So there is a small option for Australian cruisers, but again, it's probably expensive and pretty limited. So this is the latest on the progress for the resumption of cruising in the major regions of the world. It can be summed up as some progress, but still no dates. That pretty much sums it up. Remember, I have loads more Tips for Travelers episodes full of cruising advice and tips. So why not enjoy another one right now?